For over 30 years, I served in the kingdom of God in leadership. But my path was profoundly impacted by my own life's testimony and life experiences. I'm going to tell you in a nutshell. This young lady grew up in the house of God. And I had an uncle. My uncle, he decided that he wanted to shoot my pastor. I didn't know why. He shot the pastor eight times. Why did he shot, shot the pastor eight times? Well, his idea was because you violated my nephew, who was only 11 years old and you're a man. So that is not God's perfect will. Next thing is, it so happened to be the same uncle who violated me from four to 12 years old. So see that contradiction, something wrong with that, right? Well, my cousin's life was forever changed by the abuse of the church leader. It was a tragedy that touched me deeply and, be and it became the catalyst for my mission. And that's what led me to create the talk storm. And I'm gonna tell you a little bit more about the, con the talk storm. The talk storm confronted the most controversial, painful topics head on, and including abuse and in leadership. What was happening was my mother passed away in 2021. When my mother passed away, what happened was I decided to do a memorial online. Because remember, when people were dying from COVID, you couldn't really get to that funeral, could you? So when my mom had a funeral, although it was beautiful and it was a good amount of people, it wasn't the normal amount of people who would have supported her death. I know that sounds crazy, but it was the truth. So I decided to do something big online. And when we did this big memorial, we had so many people tuning in. This is Facebook, this is YouTube, this is all, all over the place. And we were grateful for that. But we had my cousin, who was a character in my book I had just released, Generation and I would say character, he was a part of my life. So his story, God allowed, even though the pain of my past was intense, the pain of my mother's past was intense, what became something that made people absolutely bonkers was the fact that I can now have a place to listen in on and then speak with because I was one of those church kids that I had no clue that there was a world out there with lists and lists of pastors and leaders who have abused in some sense. And let me tell you something. Don't get this mistake. It's not just leadership in the church organization. There are leaderships in home, at home. And those leaders have abused so many. So you're not, now you're not 40 years old, you're not 50 years old. They're all suing everybody, right? But the problem is, So through that show itself, because it was so overwhelming, I was getting calls and as an abuse counselor, I began to do counseling at a level I had never seen before. And I had 75 year olds, I had uh, 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 people who were like 30, 40 years old who were calling about their stories. They never had a platform to tell their story. So God was giving them a sense of relief. And I became overwhelmed. I became overwhelmed to the point that I didn't know if I could handle it. So the Lord began to birth a hunger inside of me. How can you fix this? And I cried and I wept. I cried and I wept. I said, God, are you seriously putting this burden on me? Who could fix this? This is something that was uh, created in the Bible days when Paul was speaking uh, uh, in the book of Corinthians, I believe it was the fifth chapter, where he was saying, listen, um, this young man, he's doing sexual uh, uh, sexual immorality in the house of God. He's doing it with his mom. I don't know if y'all know about that story, but it was his stepmother, I believe. He was with his stepmother. So it, he, Paul called it sexual immorality. He said, listen, I'm so tired of y'all sending me these letters. This is, this is me paraphrasing, y'all got it. I'm so tired of y'all sending me these letters. And the letters that you're sending me, you can handle the situation yourself. He said, either redeem him back to Jesus or put him out. But why has the body and all of us continue to allow this spirit of secrecy? Why do I say secrecy? Because the minute people find this information out, guess what they do? They shut down or they leave the church. And no one actually deal with the victim. Not even we deal with the leadership in the way that God can have restored them back. And now 
trust me, my heart is full of belief. Why? Because if the leaders did it right, then our next generation will not be affected like us and have the same testimony. This is what God wants to do for the body in repairing and getting us back in order. But I believe God created me to be a solution to the problem. So I'm going to tell you what he said in my heart to help churches, organizations repair. But there's some way you have, you can't repair surface levels. When I started doing my research, Pastor, it was so many people, so many of God, we see that he constantly calls out injustice and he speaks directly to the issues of abuse and depression and the mistreatment of others. Proverbs 22 and 8 says, whoever sows injustice reaps calamity and the rod they would in fury will be broken. Now this verse reminds us that abuse and injustice do not go unnoticed by God. He is a God of justice who will not allow the sins of oppression and abuse to go unpunished. That's one thing I, I thank the Lord for. Now, but equally, our Lord is a God of redemption and his heart is for restoration for both the victim, watch this, we always want to leave out the leaders who need help, but they're victims as well. A lot of times you look into the backgrounds of their lives, somebody did something to them. So it becomes a cycle and the one who has caused the harm. Now we serve a God who brings hope to the broken heart. In Psalms 34, 19, it declares that the Lord is close to the broken heart and save those who are crushed in spirit. Do you know that abuse leaves scars both seen and unseen? But the Lord promises to heal and redeem those who are wounded. He doesn't just bind up the wounds, y'all. He don't just bind up the wounds, but he, all, he offers complete restoration. In Isaiah 61, the first chapter proclaims that the, the mission of the Messiah, the spirit of the sovereign Lord is on me because the Lord has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the broken heart and to proclaim freedom for the captives and release from darkness for the prisoners. Now, this message of freedom is not just for the victims, all right, but also for those who have caused them. We, we, we see through scripture that God is not only concerned with those who have been uh, oppressed, but also he offers a path of redemption for those who repent from their ways. In Ezekiel, the 18th chapter and 23rd verse, it says, God asks, do I take any pleasure in the death of the wicked? Rather, I'm not pleased when they turn from their wicked ways and live. God's heart is for all to be reconciled to him. He desires healing for the abused and repentance for the abuser so that all may find the fullness of life in him. And this is why the mission, uh, the mission of restoration and trust within leadership is so critical. I don't know if you understand the severity of what has been transpired in our community.